Hi, my name is Peter Badu. I'm an applied mathematician at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And today I'm presenting our recent research on log lightning computation of capacity and Green's function. This is a collaborative work between myself and Nick Trevethan, and you can find it published in the inaugural edition of the new journal, Maple Transactions. In this project, we were interested in computing a quantity known as capacity. The notion of capacity arises in potential theory, but has broad applications to electromagnetism, numerical analysis, orthogonal polynomials, and spectral theory. And capacity is a basic measure of the size of a set, a compact set, in the complex plane. So for a set E, we represent the capacity as cap of E. And in a few simple cases, we can derive analytic expressions for the capacity of those sets. So here we have a few examples, the unit disk, an ellipse, a slit of length two, and um, some regular polygons. But in general, computing the capacity of complicated sets that might include corners or might be disconnected or might have zero measure, um, computing those capacities can be a very difficult and numerically challenging problem. So the aim of this talk is to present a new method that accurately and efficiently computes capacities of these complicated sets. And our approach is based on a formulation of the capacity in terms of the harmonic Green's function for the domain E. So one can relate the uh, capacity, the logarithmic capacity, to that Green's function via this formula. So if G is a harmonic function that takes zero values on the boundary of the set E, then it, uh, and it has asymptotic behavior like log of Z, then the capacity is given by this constant correction or perturbation factor. So the electrostatic interpretation of this Green's function is that it is the electric potential when we inject a unit charge into the set E and allow that charge to find its equilibrium distribution. And we can represent this Green's function um, as the Green's function for a unit charge and a correction factor. So this correction is this function u, and that accounts for the, the boundary, um, this partial e. Furthermore, we can usually represent u as the real part of an analytic function. I'll uh, bring in an exception later. And therefore, if we can find this function, little g, then we can find u, and then we can find capital G, and then we can back out the capacity from this asymptotic um, expression for the Green's function. Okay, so we're going to find G. And the way we do that is using a new method called the log lightning solver. And this solver originated from a series of works um, which introduced the idea of uh, a lightning solver. And that is a method um, that uses rational approximations to solve Laplace's equation. That was introduced by Abhi Gopal and Nick Trevethan in this paper. And it's very effective for tackling domains like this where there are corners on the boundary. That is, the boundary is not analytic. Okay. And this log lightning method is a spiritual successor to that lightning solver. But instead of being a rational function, it is a rational function in the log variable. So that's represented in this formula here. And let me explain the terms. The first term is a polynomial in 1 over z. So that represents the smooth part of the solution. So if, um, if we were solving Laplace in a domain that didn't have any corners, then it usually it would be sufficient to just have a, a polynomial term in 1 over z, a Lorentz series. But when we have corners in our domain, so like this, we have 1 at z1, z2, z3, and z4, then we need to account for the singular behavior of the Green's function at those corners. And that's re represented by this sum. So again, these p's are polynomials, but now it's a polynomial in one over this, uh, this strange looking logarithm term. And the justification for this reciprocal log expression is given in uh, this paper. And there it's proved that the error in approximation um, decays almost linearly um, in, in n, where n is the total number um, of terms included in this, in this sum. 
<coughs> so you have a different polynomial for each, um, for each corner, and that polynomial is of degree nj. So this is the so-called uh, confluent mode for reciprocal log approximation. Again, a lot more details are given in this, in this paper. I won't go over them here. But the point is that we represent our solution in this form, and this automatically solves Laplace's equation. It's automatically harmonic, um, but we need to determine the polynomials that satisfy the boundary condition. And that, those polynomials are determined by least squares fitting on the boundary. So you sample this, this solution, or you sample the, uh, um, the arguments of this polynomial um, at a few thousand places on the boundary, especially clustering near the corners, and then uh, fit the polynomial, or find the polynomial that's the best fit for the boundary data. Um, and uh, another thing that's worth pointing out is that usually the matrices that you, you obtain via this process are ill-conditioned, but we can avoid that using the, the Vandermond with Arnoldi process outlined in this penultimate paper just here. Okay. So this is the strategy. Represent our perturbation to the Green's function in this form, in reciprocal log form. Um, choose the, the degree of approximation with these ends, and then least squares fit on the boundary to find the polynomials that are a best fit for the boundary data. So here we apply this method to the example of the square. And here the side length is two, so the exact capacity is given by this quantity. And via this method, we can compute this capacity to 15 digits of accuracy in 0.01 seconds. Here I've illustrated the level lines of the Green's function, and the set E is, uh, in all of these, these presentations, is represented by the white boundary, and then the level lines um, uh, are going up, you can see, uh, as we go further out. The error on the boundary is around 10 to the minus 13, 10 to the minus 12, and it, it's very regular, and especially near the corners, the error decays um, almost to the machine precision. And then in this final plot on the far right, we compare the convergence of the lightning and the log lightning behavior, uh, log lightning solvers, and we see the almost um, exponential convergence of the log lightning solver borne out in this plot, whereas the lightning solver is merely root exponential. Okay. So here's the MATLAB code for that example. Uh, you can also find this in the paper, and you can copy and paste it and run it yourself. I'll just run through quickly what each of the lines do. So you can see it's only, it's only 12 lines, so very simple. Um, on this first line, uh, we are setting up the, the boundary points. So these are the exponentially clustered points between minus 1 and 1. Here we're defining the boundary of the square. Here we define the boundary data. Here we set the degree of the polynomial to use in the reciprocal log variable. Here we're doing the Vandermonde and Arnoldi orthogonalization that I mentioned previously. So if you want to run this, then you need the, the VA orthog code, which um, you can find online. Uh, the next three steps are exploiting the symmetry of the square. Th this step isn't necessary, but here it, um, it makes the solver a couple of times faster. Here we're doing the least squares fitting, and then here we're calculating the value of u at infinity, and that gives us the, um, the capacity on the next line. And then on the last line, we're calculating the exact value of the capacity. So you can see just how simple and elegant these, these codes can be to solve a relatively complicated problem in just uh, 10 to 12 lines of code. Here are a few other examples for simply connected sets. So this is a lens, a square with a, um, a quarter of a circle cut out, a lemniscape, a loon, a square with two circles cut out, and then a kind of broken lemniscape. And in all these cases, we got the capacity to, um, I think, at least 10 significant figures in just a fraction of a second. We can also use this method to study disconnected regions, but we need to make a couple of changes to our, um, our representation for G. The first change is that we need to include additional Lorentz series terms. Um, so we need new Lorentz series that are centered um, at each of these sets. So if we had these three sets and we wanted to compute the capacity exterior to all of them simultaneously, we need um, to include these Q polynomials or Lorentz series um, where CK is a point in the center of these sets. 
And then, um, as in the, the previous examples, we also need to sum over these reciprocal log polynomials um, where zj represent, um, represents a corner. So we have a different uh, set of log reciprocal terms at each corner. So, like this. Okay. But there's another subtlety that we need to include, which is that um, the Green's function cannot be represented as uh, the real part of an analytic function in the multiply connected case. And this is the logarithmic conjugation theorem. And it says that we actually need to include some logarithmic terms. And the result of this is that uh, the imaginary part of G is not going to be single valued. Um, but in order to satisfy the boundary value problem, we need to include these logarithm terms. And a proof of that is given in Axler's paper. So here are a couple of examples with disconnected regions. Um, uh, again, we compute these uh, within a fraction of a second, getting around 10 plus digits of accuracy. Um, and here, um, it, you can see the, the gray lines are the harmonic conjugates of the, the Green's function. Um, so you can't really tell here, but they're, they're not single valued because of the presence of those logarithm terms via the logarithmic conjugation theorem. We can also use this method to study domains that don't have an interior. So for example, the set E um, could be the real interval from minus one to one. And this has zero measure, but it has a positive capacitance of a half. But now there's nowhere for us to place our reciprocal log terms. Wherever we place them, there are going to be singularities on the boundary, and that's, uh, that's unacceptable. So to get around this, we use an inverse Tchaikovsky transformation. Um, we represent our function g in terms of this variable w, and w is the inverse Tchaikovsky variable. And we have to be careful to define the branch cut of this variable to lie either side of the arc. So here's an animation of what that variable looks like. So we start with our, um, our slit from minus one to one, and now we apply that transformation, and you can see that it's opening up that slit so that it gets mapped to a circle. And now in this w variable, we can place our reciprocal log terms inside the circle and they don't have an effect on the boundary. So really we're mapping our problem onto a different uh, Riemann surface and placing the poles or the reciprocal log terms on that Riemann surface so that they don't appear in the original domain. Here are a few examples that we can tackle. So um, in this star example, there are actually exact expressions for the capacity, but there certainly aren't in these, in these other cases. And uh, in each of these cases, we do, the, we do these Tchaikovsky transformations locally. So we would take this, um, this slit, do a Tchaikovsky transformation, uh, place the poles there, then do uh, this slit, and then do this slit all separately. So we're doing local transformations. We don't need a global map that opens up the, the entire domain. We can do it all locally. And then to finish off, uh, there are some hybrid examples here where we have a mixture of interior domain, uh, domains with interior, domains without exterior, and also disconnected domains down, down here. Okay, so to wrap up, we presented a new method that efficiently computes the capacity of sets um, and it's based on a, uh, a new idea called log lightning approximation. And we compute the capacities to 10 plus digits in a fraction of a second, and it's very competitive with other methods. And we applied it to um, connected, disconnected, and uh, arc domains. So thank you for listening. You can read the paper um, on here, and I'll be happy to receive any comments, uh, questions, or feedback. Thank you.